My name is Alex and today we're going to be looking at how to make a simple Mandelbrot zoom. In this case we're going to be using p5.js and we're going to be using the web editor available at editor.p5.js.org. The first thing we're going to do is set our color space to hue saturation brightness and then we're going to declare a center x, center y, and a scale for our coordinate space. Next we're going to declare three functions. We're going to declare draw brought, which will set the color of the pixels on the screen. We're going to declare pixel the point, which will convert the pixels coordinates into the coordinates in the Mandelbrot set. And we're going to declare calculate point, which is going to use that point as an input into the Mandelbrot sequence and determine if it is inside the Mandelbrot set or outside the Mandelbrot set. The first function we're going to write is the pixel to point function, which takes in an x and y coordinate in pixel space and converts it into an x and y coordinate in the Mandelbrot set space. And we're going to be considering that space to be the complex plane centered at 0, 0, with the height of the screen going from positive 2i down to negative 2i and with the horizontal axis being proportional to that, which means we need to offset by our aspect ratio, which in this case is 16 by nine. We also need to add on our center X and our center Y, as well as divide by our scale, which is what simulates our camera and allows us to zoom in and out of the coordinate space and also to move left and right and up and down through it. Next, we're gonna write the calculate point function. This is where we will calculate if a given point is inside the Mandelbrot set or not. By definition, this means that in the iterative sequence zi equals zi minus 1 squared plus c, with z0 starting at 0, is stable. It has been proven that any point c distance 2 or more from the origin is unstable, so we're going to be using that as our bounds check. If the sequence stays within that bounds for at least 50 generations, we're going to say that c is in the Mandelbrot set. For points not in the Mandelbrot set, we will also return the number of iterations it took for it to escape our boundary. Now we have everything we need to write the draw brought function. So this function is going to loop through all of the pixels. This means a double for loop going through the width and the height, getting every single pixel in our canvas space. And then for every pixel, we will use pixel the point to get our complex coordinate, and then we will pass that complex number into calculate point to get our result. If the result is in the Mandelbrot set, we're going to color that pixel black. If the result is not in the Mandelbrot set and it took more than one generation to leave the boundary, we're going to color it according to how many generations it took. And the way we're going to do that is by having a set saturation and a set brightness, but varying our color based on just how many iterations it took. For points that didn't even survive a single generation, i.e. that are already outside of the boundary, we're just going to color them gray. Don't forget to call the draw brought function inside of your setup and to update the pixels at the end of your draw brought function. So you can see we now have our Mandelbrot set being drawn out for us with the different colors indicating how many iterations it took for them to escape and the black pixels representing pixels that never escape. I'm going to quickly change our color scale which is completely arbitrary and then we can move on to how we can move around this set and zoom in and out of it. The way we're going to do that is by using the isKeyDown function, which is going to let us detect whether or not the up arrow, left arrow, down arrow, right arrow, or the plus or minus keys are being pressed. If they are, we know we need to redraw our Mandelbrot set using a slightly altered center position and a slightly altered scale depending on what keys were pressed. This is a very simple way of doing things, but it's also super inefficient. Uh, I encourage you to look into other ways of doing this. This is just the simplest way to make this video as accessible as possible. As you can see, now we can move around, we can zoom in and out, and we can explore the Mandelbrot set in any way that we would like. There are a few issues with this program which you can see once you start to get really zoomed in. One of them is a really simple fix. Uh, 50 is not that high of an iteration count to check if something is in the Mandelbrot set or not. 
you could easily increase that number. Another area where this could be improved is the precision of the floating point numbers. Eventually you get so zoomed in that you start to get floating point precision errors. And of course you have to balance this with the hardware that you're using and how fast your computer is able to process these things. That's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned something and I will see you next time.